Around 1300 BC, at the time when the Greeks took Troy with their famous Trojan horse, in the distant Orient, thousands of migrating people arrived at the Yellow River. They came from the former capital city of Yan. After a long time on the road, they found themselves in a place named Bei Meng. Their ruler was the 20th generation leader of the Shang dynasty, and his name was Pan Gang. He made the decision to move his capital from the area around present-day Chufu in Shandong to northern Henan, where the modern city of Anyang is today. By doing this, he hoped that the bad luck that had bound his dynasty for nine generations would be left behind, along with the influence of those loyal to the previous ruler, but who had refused the same loyalty to him. He wanted his people to have a good life and his country a prosperous future. The place was favorably located, with the Taihang Mountains to its west, a vast plain to the east, the nearby Yellow River flowing from southwest to northeast, the Qi River to its south, the Jiang River to its north, and the Wan River cutting across its middle. Over 3,300 years ago, it had very fertile soil, a nice climate, and adequate rainfall. Quickly, a capital city rose up. According to the history books, Bei Meng went by another name, Yin. So after Pan Gang moved its capital to this place, the Shang Dynasty was also known as the Yin Dynasty. The prosperity of this place called Beimang didn't last long. In fact, it would be just 200 odd years before it would be in ruins. 3,000 years later, everything about this dynasty had receded into history, save for a number of sagas and legends. In the early 19th century, some Westerners alleged that the history of Chinese civilization was traceable only to 841 BC. And indeed, due to the lack of records, China's history did seem to blur beyond the 9th century BC, as nothing beyond that time was certain, and certainly not accepted as fact by Westerners. The glorious history of the Chinese civilization was in doubt. The capital ruins of the Shang dynasty never resurfaced, nor did they regain their former glory. The terrain where Beimang was located was high. Since the Warring States period and the Sui and Tang dynasties in particular, the place became littered with unmarked graves. Human habitation didn't resume in this place until the Song dynasty. At that time, slowly, a village developed called Xiao Tuan. In the late Qin dynasty, villagers often found bone fragments here when they were working in the fields. Chinese medicine shops purchased the bones as a precious medicine called dragon bones. The bones were gathered and then sold to shops in the cities. In 1899, an official in the Imperial College in Beijing contracted malaria. 
he sent someone to a medicine shop to pick up a prescription. One item in it was dragon bones. The official concerned Wang Yi Rong was a very careful person. He scrutinized everything in the medicine brought back to him. When he looked through the ingredients, he made a discovery. On the bits and pieces of the bones of turtles and animals, Wang Yi Rong saw strange patterns. He was somewhat shocked to discover that these calf symbols were not natural, but man-made. Wang Yi Rong had acquired fame as an established scholar in ancient metal and stone studies, so he knew the significance of these symbols. Wang immediately sent people to purchase more dragon bones from the medicine shop for academic research. Before long, Wang concluded that these symbols were China's oldest written language, originating from the Shang Dynasty 3,000 years before. Wang spent everything he had collecting the dragon bones and was in fact the first collector of these inscribed oracle shells and animal bones in modern history. However, even though people were fairly certain what these signs were, they were unable to read any of them, let alone decipher what they were saying. Wang Guowei was a famous scholar in modern Chinese history, well versed in literature, philosophy, history and aesthetic studies. In 1917, he successfully deciphered the posthumous titles of the Shang rulers and even those of their ancestors. This was a significant feat, as with the deciphered titles, he was able to fix the genealogy of the Shang rulers. This Shang genealogy agreed with the description and records of the historian about Yin, the description of Shang rulers and their ancestors. Wang Guowei's discovery concluded beyond any doubt that the description of the Shang dynasty was not fictional. With this, the existence of the Shang dynasty in early Chinese history became an indisputable fact. Anyang's Yin ruins were thus determined to be the capital of the late Shang dynasty. The fact was the Shang dynasty no longer existed even in stories. The discovery of the inscriptions on the oracle bones pushed China's history back by some 500 years. These ruins became the earliest ancient capital remains able to be traced, researched and verified by archaeological efforts. The Yin ruins, 36 square kilometers on both sides of the Huan River, are in the northwestern suburbs of Anyang, Hunan province. Everything in the ruins was arranged around the zone of the palace and ancestral temple. It was a city opening to the outside world.
1936, archaeologists found a pit full of inscribed oracle bones. The pieces that it yielded were the most numerous to date. This is the famous pit, H127. 17,096 pieces were brought to light from less than half a cubic meter of soil, among them over 300 being complete. What we see here is a replica of the deposited layers of soil from which the finds were made. On top of the bones was a curled up human skeleton. Judging by its pose, archaeologists surmised that this person had jumped into the pit of his own accord. After use, the shells and bones of turtles and other animals were collected into a pit just like this. The skeleton was very likely from the person who maintained the pit. The contents of these oracle bones cover a very broad subject matter, dealing with politics, the military, agriculture, and a multitude of other topics. This information provides us with valuable clues in the understanding of distant antiquity. Pangang's nephew, Wu Dian, was the 23rd generation ruler of the Shang dynasty. He accomplished more laudable deeds than any ruler before him. The 10,000 fragments of bone excavated from pit H127 come from the time of Wu Ding. Today, we know that Wu Ding was a very diligent ruler. With the help of people at the bottom of society, even former slaves, he made great progress with politics, the military, and the economy. Wu Ding spent three years battling with hostile tribes in the surrounding areas. He expanded Shang territory and he facilitated economic and cultural exchanges between the Central Plains and the tribes. These efforts made the Shang a great power of the time. Its influence reached Gansu to the west, the eastern seaboard, the desert to the north, and the Yangtze to the south. The Shang Dynasty continued for 17 generations. During its 629 year history, it had 31 rulers. Power was inherited first by younger brother from elder brother, then son from his deceased father. The capital was relocated more than once until Pangang made Yin its capital. After that, it never changed. Little was found in history books about the Shang dynasty, so this made the oracle bones highly important. As most of the bones came from turtles or the shoulder blades of oxen, they're referred to as inscriptions on oracle bones or turtle shells. 
However, these bones were not documents. They were for the practice of divination. An oracle was the message inscribed on the oracle bones by a diviner. It was the answer received by burning the bones or shells to a question. A complete oracle had four parts, narration, asking, the answer, and verification. One of the oracle bones bears these words. Before the war, Fu Hao recruited in the place of Pang. These inscribed characters say that Fu Hao led 3,000 troops to join the leaders of a 10,000 strong force for an expedition against a remote hostile country. This was the biggest war documented by these bones. Compared with modern wars which often involve hundreds of thousands of troops, this war seemed like almost nothing. But it needs to be remembered that an army of 13,000 accounted for one-tenth of the total population of the time. Thus, it was by no means insignificant during the Shan Dynasty. Fu Hao, an army general and a woman, was a very important public figure. Most oracles obtained from divination were about the ruler. If Fu Hao's name appeared in a Butsu, she was very likely one of the ruler's family members. Over time, yet more information about the general has been uncovered. Much to the surprise of scholars, Fu Hao was a pregnant woman and the wife of the ruler. The ruler, Wu Ding, was very preoccupied with the arrival of the baby. Naturally, he was anxious to know if it was a baby girl or a baby boy. Every piece of information thus suggests that Fu Hao was the empress. The Shang dynasty was a male-dominated society. Men enjoyed higher status than women. An empress who was also a female army general with military feats behind her would be highly unusual. This is just one of the mysteries from that strange dynasty. In 1976, quite by chance, archaeologists located Fu Hao's tomb. The tomb chamber was 5.6 meters long from north to south, 4 meters from east to west, and 7.5 meters below the ground. Incredibly, it had never been robbed. Due, however, to water accumulated in the ground, the coffin had rotted away. It seems that due to the aforementioned facts, the tomb robbers never found the tomb. For the first time, people came to know the luxurious burial customs of the Shang dynasty. One thousand nine hundred and twenty eight works of bronze, jade, bone, and stone were unearthed, all of them beautifully wrought with elaborate carvings. Each one was an eye opener. 
Together with them were 6,800 seashells, the currency in circulation back then. Seashells were thus a symbol of wealth. A yue was an axe-like weapon during the Xiang dynasty, and it was also the symbol of power, the sign of military command. On an eight kilogram bronze yue axe, Fu Hao's name was clearly engraved. The evidence was overwhelming. Fu Hao was indeed an army general. The tomb of Fu Hao was the only one historians could determine by year and the identity of its occupant from the inscriptions on the oracle bones. One question appeared frequently in the oracle bones. It was, will Fu Hao marry again? The answer was, she has been married to three different rulers. The Shang people believed in a netherworld where life was just like life in this world. Fu Hao should, Wu Ding hoped, be married to the dead Shang rulers there. The large amount of burial objects showed a hope that Fu Hao would have everything she had enjoyed in this world in the next. In 1939, inside the mausoleum area, villagers from Wuguan found a huge square vessel made of bronze. This particular bronze vessel, called the Simu Wu Square Vessel, is the largest bronze work unearthed so far. The bronze vessel is 133 centimeters tall and weighs 832 kilograms. Over 3,300 years ago, the Shang people had mastered the technique of smelting and casting. Clearly, their society was highly developed. Apart from cultural relics, the Yin ruins yielded numerous partial human skeletons. Many such skeletons were found in the palace and mausoleum zone. They made everyone shudder at the mere sight of them. According to records from the inscriptions on the oracle bones, slaves were killed as a sacrifice during worshipping ceremonies for the ancestors of the Shang ruler. Once, 2,600 slaves were killed. Most of the skeletons were incomplete, some without heads, some cut into halves at the waist. The results of lab tests on the bones showed that they were not Shang people, but slaves from another ethnic group. Capturing as many slaves as possible was one of the spoils of war. We now know they were used as sacrifices and worshipping ceremonies. To the Shang people, prisoners of war were no different from domestic animals taken from enemies. They made ideal sacrifices for the ancestors. The two most significant activities for the ruler were war 
and worship. This bronze container, when found, held a human skull that had been boiled. After defeating an enemy tribe, their leader's head was often boiled inside a bronze container before being presented to the ancestors in a ceremonial ritual. Shang people worship nature and their forebears. The god of heaven was also the god of ancestry. This belief influenced later Chinese civilization. Inside, there was brutal killing. On the other, a highly developed civilization. What did this Shan dynasty over 3,300 years ago look like? These buried horses and chariots, the main means of transportation during the Shang dynasty, have provided us with a sample of their earliest vehicles. On the remains of the Shang roads, ruts in both directions can clearly be seen. There was even a sidewalk for pedestrians. Over 3,300 years ago, Shang people understood well what we call modern ideas about transportation. Today, however, the brutal killing of slaves horrifies us. One can only wonder just how many more secrets lie hidden under the soil we have no way to know for certain. Yin served as the Shang capital for 250 years after the arrival of Pan Gang. The 59 years that Wu Ding was in power were a prosperous period for the Shang. After the Zhou dynasty overthrew the Shang dynasty, Wu Gang, the son of the Zhou ruler, was made the governor of this place. However, he was killed after he staged a rebellion. The remaining Shang people moved away and left the place deserted. The Shang dynasty was full of mythology and legends. But it had the oldest written language and a brilliant culture. It was a time of brutal killings and cruel wars. In every possible way, the Yin ruins are more than a ruined capital city. They comprise the epitome of a kingdom, a stopover point for Oriental civilization on its progress forward.